Susadam kang preong. Amen. Susadam kang preong. Cum ripsua. Som sebaik kum niak tengok kanya nau kinom nau perniam. Pray Yesus Kri. Prakni kinom rikri ay rikri kelang nau cimo yang kroncunum. Nau ni will have a center. Hai nang bong poon nang krosa tengok nang perncum. Me live stream kelang protek teng mul. Ban som preparan tempo. Greeting you all in the mighty name of follow Jesus Christ. It's just a blessing to be with you all this morning here at the World Harvest Center. And to all of our viewers, our live stream, those who are tuning in live stream around the globe. And we thank God for all of your life this morning. First and foremost this morning, I would like to thank God for his protection, for his guidance, for his goodness and his provisions in our lives, in the work that we are called to in carrying out the given mandate of reaching the unreached with the gospel message of Jesus Christ. It's been a privilege to be in the front line. It's been a privilege to be in the mission field, to taking the gospel and be part of the fulfillment of the Great Commission. And we thank God for his protection over the years. Secondly, I'd love to thank uh, the founder and the president, Reverend Sulesi Kurlo and Naumere. Thank you so much for the trust. Thank you so much for believing in us in the work that we carried out with the vision that God has birthed in your heart reaching the unreached and church plant and plant churches where there is no church. Thank you so much. And to all our pastors and families, thank you so much for all the commitments and sacrifices. To all my colleagues, fellow missionaries who are out there in the mission field and to all our church families, thank you so much for your endless support. Thank you so much for your for all your prayers in standing with us in carrying out the vision of the church in reaching the unreached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. To bring to you the highlights of what that is taking place and whatever that you're going to hear this morning, all the testimonies and stories, that's all our stories in what God have called us to do in the vision that we are under in. First, I bring greetings to you from, on, from the mission field of Cambodia with a regional coordinator, Randini Susu Dinovo, and Neomai who have been serving among the Kui people, the Kui tribe, in the middle, in the center of Cambodia. And Pastor Seta and the family who are serving in Phnom Penh, serving among the unfortunate in the rubbish dump of Cambodia, and to the Kui, the Vietnamese communities along the Ton Lisa River. And uh, Muriti Kei, who was in Vietnam, and he's uh, with Randini Susu and Neomai, at the moment in, uh, in the village of Rumchek in Nom Daik, among the Kui. And Ulai and I have been serving up at the northern border, bordering Cambodia and Thailand and the Laos uh, up at the northern border. I'd love to bring to you a few of the highlights of what that has been carried out. First, the medical center that is among the Kui communities. This medical center will stand as the testament of God's faithfulness and the faithfulness of God's people. Now, Mary, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all that you're doing with all the moms. We thank you all to all our mothers standing there among the Kui communities at a medical center that will save so many lives, not only physically, but they're going to be saved. Their souls are also going to be saved for the glory of God in years to come. Thank you so much for all your sacrifices. Thank you so much for all your giving. Thank you so much for all that you're doing so that the training center can stand up this morning. And uh, Randini Jesus is working on its final documents before we open and the running of that training center. Up at the northern border, we have uh, trained leaders and encouraged leaders, not only they are going to share the gospel, but so that they can take hold with both hands the vision of the church and run with it. And as we, as we, we hear this morning, at the end of the last year, we managed to build a one uh, church in the district of Odongbai. This uh, this church is we beginning last year. Is we beginning with this pandemic, this restriction. And people still cannot travel in. 
because of uh, some of the restrictions and people started growing in that part of communities in Odongbai. And they asked us if you can build one church. Then I encouraged them, I told them that we are going to build the church. Nobody else is going to build it. We are going to collect its funds and whatever resources that we have, we are going to use it to build this church. And in the middle of last year, we managed to collect that sum of money and able to, to build this, uh, this building, this wooden building that is stand in the middle of the district of Odongbai in the village of Presaak. That the church members, it was the church members that give. We are encouraging the church member to give because there's nobody else. If you need for the extension of the kingdom, it is us who are going to stand up as a local to stand up and take on that button and take on the vision and build the church. And that was the church that was built in that, in that communities that will stand since Jesus gave the Great Commission. That was that widow building that stands that will cater, that can cater for 50 peoples in that communities. And we thank God, we managed to raise $1,000 US. And it was the elders that they bring whatever they can bring for those who can cut timbers, for those who can uh, bring uh, whatever timber that they can bring for the accomplishment of that building. And those other elders that are taking up the, the baton, they're taking up the role. And the other ones who are cutting timbers and with the giving that uh, allowing us to build that uh, building in the village of Prezak. And not only that, they are started reaching out. They are started going out to the communities in preaching the gospel and they started uh, baptizing people in the various communities along, along the places that we, are, that, we are, that we are stationed along the border of uh, Thailand. And uh, that was uh, the building uh, that we, we rent out at the end of uh, last year because of the, the growth in that community and the people started worshipping under their houses, under the tree. And we, we ask, uh, we managed to, to rent out uh, this building where we teach the young children, we teach them English, and on Sunday and in every Wednesday evening we have the cell group in that particular house, which is, uh, the cost was $100 a month, that building. And it was, and encourage them, the church, and encourage the church in Odongbai, within that area, in the village, for them to, that they're going to pay, that we're going to stand up in whatever that we have for the month. And we're going to pay that rent until we manage to find the land and build a building on that particular location. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you so much for all that you're doing, for all that we are doing together in the work and the call that God have called us for this morning. Those are some of the photos where these elders are taking up the initiative to reach out to the communities, to reach out to their localities and training and teaching the people, reaching out to them and baptizing them for the glory of God this morning. At home up at the northern border, we also have some students. We have children that are coming far as 50 kilometers or 60 kilometers away from home. In whatever opportunity we have, we grab every opportunity for the gospel to be penetrated, for the, so that the gospel can be shared into those communities. Those other students, they came from communities, they came from the villages. And as they came and stay at home to attend, because there's only one high school up there at the northern border. They came to stay home and study. Those other few boys at home, with a with t-shirt that says Jesus heals and Jesus saves. And many people have asked me this question, how you manage to, to cater for all that they need when they stay at home. I always tell them, God always faithful to provide. We are farmers up at the northern border. They are, most of them are farmers. And every day they, they bring whatever they harvest. They bring it at home with a bag of rice whenever they came home. They bring the bag of rice and that's how. When there is rice, there is food. So they are all farmers. So for food uh, and whatever that they need to, for them for, to, feed, to feed them and all that they need, they are, they are very easy people. I mean, 
the students, they can have anything. You can name it. They'll have whatever we have so that they can survive. All they need is to be part so that they can attend church, uh, attend school, and be, and be trained so that they can live a better life. So they are the, these are the students that are staying at home. And we have a few at our backyards. We plant things. We plant some beans. We plant some bananas. And the bananas, as I was sharing on Tuesday here, I told them, they are so easy to be with because they can have anything. Amen. They can, they eat raw bananas. They eat anything that they can, whatever that you can think of. They'll manage to survive all those things. And uh, we thank God for that, that we can, that they can be rich in their communities, that we're able to reach their communities through the students. You know, the people are talking about the student that stays home. Before we even reach their communities, people have, have heard that they are missionaries. They are people that believe in Jesus, where the students are staying so that they can attend school in the district of Anlongveng. And with that, that is how opportunities, how we are able to, to grab those opportunities just for the gospel to be preached and be said to the communities. Before I came, we are harvesting rice. There is always part of the harvest, and we thank God. The Bible says the harvest are plentiful, and the laborers are few. Let's pray for the Lord of the harvest to send more laborers into the harvest field. It's always a blessing to be with the communities because harvest is an annual, uh, even it's an annual uh, thing that happens every year. Whenever we, we have a harvest, whenever we, it's, it's time for harvest, it only took two weeks for the timing of the harvest. Because once it's more than two weeks or even goes to one year or one month, the grains started falling. So it's hard to harvest, um, to harvest rice. So it's always, we always encourage people. They always ask the villagers to come and harvest. But for us as a missionary, just to be with them, to be a helping hands in reaching out to them. I remember when we are doing this, when we were harvesting last year, you know, the people started talking and started calling. They see how we manage to be with them, how we manage to mingle with them in the field and enjoying whatever food that they have, they, pr they bring to the field. And they said when they started asking, where, what are the, where, where are the fields that you are harvesting? Where you are harvested? They said we are harvesting at one of the Jesus people's farm and we are with the Jesus people. They said, they said like this, Kinyom now young, now chimoy, Yesu. Yesu is Jesus in Kamaya. So they, they simply asking, they simply answering their question. They said, we are with the Jesus people. That is how they managed to talk among themselves. That is how they, they, they talk us as when they, they try to, to introduce us or telling others about us. They always talk about they are the Jesus people. And we are not even sharing to them, but they know these are the Jesus people. These are the people that they have the power that God is with them in taking the gospel and reaching out to them with the power of his resurrection. And uh, those are the few of the, the photos. And uh, that is, those bags are 100 kg rice that are already the rest. And we thank God for the strength in carrying out. In every opportunity we have, we grab those opportunities just for the gospel to be preached in various places and to the community that we're saving up at the northern border. Last year we managed to celebrate one of our, our Christmas celebration. And uh, it was the people that came up with the initiative, the initiative to celebrate Christmas. And we, it takes us two weeks, that is uh, at the mission base up at Enlongveng, where we invited 300 people to come and attend this Christmas production. And it was Lukuru Ulai, Ulai who share a Christmas message the day, the birth of Jesus Christ to the people, and those 300 people within that village, within the community that's around us up at Enlongveng. I mean, Enlongveng is 10 kilometers away from the border of Thailand, where we say the mission base, the mission base is just 10 kilometers away from the border of Thailand. So that is uh, our Christmas production. And they ask us, Lukuru, please be with us, stay with us for Christmas before you left for Fiji. And we managed to celebrate it on the 15th of last year. 
to have a Christmas celebration. And we thank God that they are able to stand up. People have started to stand up. The elders and the family started to stand up and hold on with the vision and run in with it in reaching their local community, reaching their families with the gospel of Jesus. Just with a few testimonies of what that is uh, in the field. Uh, there was this old man, Lukrubai, who was diagnosed with kidney stone. And he was at the, at the hospital in Anlongveng and they cannot even treat it. So he was sent over to Thailand to be treated. When he went to Thailand, he was told he was being diagnosed and he was told to come back and prepare 3 million kamai, 3 million real. 3 million kamai is equivalent to 1,000 US dollars. So he was told to come back, to come back for one week before he go back to, to look for that 1,000 US dollars and come back to Thailand for its treatment, for its operation. And when he came back, he came home, he said, look, uh, I, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough money. I just don't have money to cater for this treatment. But I believe the God that we serve, the God that you preach to me, that God can save me from this sickness. And we prayed for him on that day and tell him by next week, he went back to Thailand in the city, in the, in the province of Surin, the city of Surin, for all the doctors in Thailand. This is the hospital in Anlongveng, the district hospital in Anlongveng, before he was taken to Thailand. And when he go back, the doctors who diagnosed him, the doctors who have checked him, ask him this question, what did you do when you go back to Cambodia? What is that that you do when you go back home? Do you visit Kurukamaya, which doctors? If somebody have treated you back in Cambodia, then he said, nobody has ever treated me. But when I go back, there are two missionaries up at, at, at the northern border. They pray for me. We believe God to heal me from sickness. And they said, we cannot even see whatever that we have diagnosed weeks ago. You are cleared. Whatever that we have seen a weeks ago, there is no more there. But we thank God for your prayers. We thank God for standing with us. That is our testimony. That is all that God is doing. That he can do in the extension of his kingdom. And he has been one of a strong believer elders up and he is the very first one when we came back he built with his harvest with his harvest of rice he said look we're going to use this money to build one our first house church and he is the elder that we built in his in his place in the village where Chan Ten came the village of Rumchek where that first house church was then before we built the wooden house church uh, the wooden church in the in previous in place and uh, that is uh, Lukrubai and we thank God. And uh, lately, our last, uh, this, this is this woman who, who was gave birth at the hospital. This is eight hours away from the northern border beside the Tonle Sap Lake. He was given birth after one year. That was the daughter. After one year, she was bedridden. She was bedridden for three months. He has been visited. They took her to the hospital, to the local hospitals, every place, to the witch doctors, to all the people around there in Sim Rips and uh, in Kompong Tom, he, they cannot even treat her. Then their families up at the northern border call her and said, there are missionaries up here at the northern border. They believe Jesus. If you can come up, they bring him, they bring the family home. That's grandma and the, and the mom with the daughter. They bring her home. And for four months, she stay with us at home. After two weeks, she stand up from her bed. And she started cooking. For the past one and a half years, for the past, she cannot even look after the kids. She cannot even do any housework. But after two weeks up at the border, she managed to cook again and she stand. And after four months at the border, we send her back to their house in, a, in the district of Stung. And it was on my way back from Enlongveng, from, from the city in Phnom Penh, when Radini Susu gave us a tuk-tuk. She gave us a tuk-tuk. That tuk-tuk, it's a motorbike with a carrier at the back. I have to drive the tuk-tuk from the city up to the northern border. It takes 10 hours to travel by car, but hopefully it takes 15 hours to travel from that, uh, with that tuk-tuk up at the northern border. And I was calling them, they, they, they keep on calling and said, look, Ru, when are you going to visit us? Please visit us. We have families here. We need to fellowship. We need to, to start a church here in the village. 
And each on my way back, I was thinking of the distance that I'm going to travel. That 15 hours, by 6 o'clock in the I left at 4, uh, 4 a.m. in the morning. By 6 o'clock in the evening, I can reach the border up at the non, and, and Long Van. But it was when I came at around 11 o'clock, when they reached there, wherever the, uh, in their town in stone. And they insisted and pray and, and really encouraged me and asked me, please, just come and visit us. You know, when I come, these are the staunch Buddhist places beside the, the Tonlesa Lake. When I came that day, we pray and they prepare lunch for me the day as I was traveling. And I told them, please, I'm not going to be long. I'm going to travel up again. They said, please just spend a night. Just spend a night and bless the family and bless the house. You have been with us. You have accommodated us for the past four months. You feed us. At least just allow us to host you for a night. But unfortunately that night, the village police, the Mepum, the village head, and the community head, they visited us that night and they asked me to leave. They asked, uh, all the foreigners cannot stay in the village. Please, you need to go back to the nearest town. This is around uh, 15 kilometers from the main road to the lake of the Tolisa, beside the lake. The other village right beside the lake. You need to go back to the nearest village, to the nearest town so that you can spend a night. If you want to visit them, you can visit them again. But things that touched me, that hit me the day when she stood up, this lady, with grandma, when they stood up and said, all of you understand that I was bedridden for three months. I have going to all the local hospital, I have going to all the witch doctors and everyone that can heal me from my sickness, but no one, no one have ever healed me. It was this missionary, it was this missionary who opened the house for me for four months. They fed me for four months, they accommodated me for four months. Why don't you just give them, give him an opportunity just to stay at our house? There was silence in the house as they were sitting that night. Before we have our dinner, we pray together with the Mepum and the, all the police, the village police and the village head. We pray together that we have fellowship and they said, look, Ru, if there are opportunity, you're going to come by. Please do visit us again. We are opening these places. And that grandmother traveled with me the following day, traveled with me back up at the northern border just to testify that they have their first fellowship that night. They started their first church that night in their village in the district of Stone. With that, thank you so much for your prayers. And lastly, before I finish off this morning, I just want to share about as we are always traveling by motorbike. Motorbike is what we use up at the northern border, and it's uh, economically, and it's, it's easy to travel by and reaching the unreached. And this other motorbike that we are using up north. And uh, at one point, we not have enough. And when you come, every time you come to the gasoline station, we always see these big trucks, these double, these two-wheeler trucks that always cross borders, these big companies, they always come to the gasoline station to feed, to fill their gas, and they leave. I always saw them, when they come, they always sign a docket, they always sign a document, and then they leave. One day I come and ask the owner of the gasoline station, what is that that they always do? I always saw them, they come and sign, and they leave. They said, they always come and, and sign with their receipts. It was their, all their, their boss who always come later and pay whenever the receipt is full. And I ask him this, please, if there are possibility, you can allow us to fill at your gasoline station with the same way that these big companies are doing. For our surprises, he said, you can because I have seen you every day. You always come to this gasoline station. The way is where the big companies filling and they sign their receipts. In the midst of that big companies, the companies of all companies, the companies of heaven also walk in in that gasoline stations where they just fill in the gasoline and sign that receipts and leave. There will be no excuse where the gospel need to be preached up there at the northern border in the locality and the areas up at the north because God always provide, God always show up. In, in every six months, that receipts always take us six months. It always take us six months to be full, then we pay. And God always show up. God always provide for us in 
the receipt that need to be paid in every four to six months with that. And uh, we thank God for that this morning. Once again, Reverend Sully, thank you so much, Nomere. Thank you so much for the trust, for believing in us, in the work that you entrusted us to be at the front line in carrying out the vision that God has birthed in your heart in the fulfillment of the Great Commission. And we believe we are the generation that will live to see the fulfillment of the Great Commission. To all our families, to all our church families, thank you so much for all your support. Thank you so much for your for all the praise, for your endless support in carrying out, in reaching and giving the mandate of reaching the unreached and planned churches where there is no church. From the border of Cambodia to all the families up north in Asia, some prayer, protein for.